All right, if you've got some, a clunky or a locking up knee that's popping, we're going to show you tests, two tests that you can do uh, on your own. You're going to want to see a doctor possibly if it's serious. But anyways, at least you're going to know what's going on with the knee, uh, and it's going to be that simple. So, Snap, crackle, pop. Yeah, and there you go. Bob has spoken. <laughs> Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists. All right, before we get going, I want to clarify one thing, and Bob and I concur on this. If your knee snap, crackles, and pops, and there's no pain associated right. with it, you can go down like this and up, and it snaps and crackles and pops. Zero pain. It doesn't bother you out throughout, throughout the day. It's okay. You, you, nothing to worry about. Right. That's just the way your knee is being. That's right. If, if, However, if it's like that, and over time it's gradually getting worse, or all of a sudden it does start to hurt, then you need to look or at this. locks up. Yeah, or locks up. Good. Now, if your knee happens to lock up, and usually it's intermittently, sometimes with stairs, uh, and you just cannot move in it, it's pain associated with it, it's almost certainly a meniscus tear or meniscus problem. You agree, right. Bob? I agree. Okay. So uh, one thing I do want to talk about, or I want to show you, what the meniscus is, and this is a model of a knee. This is the quadricep muscles here, the tibia bone. So it would look like this. The patella or the kneecap is actually getting in the way to show you the meniscus. So with this model, we can flip it out of the way. The meniscus is cartilage. It supports and stabilizes the knee, and it's there's actually it's kind of like a horseshoe shape here. And all the way over to here, this happens to be the ACL ligament. But this leg, this uh, tissue here, the meniscus, can actually tear. It can fold over. A piece of it can break off. All those things can cause locking and pain associated with it. As you get older, it can happen without trauma. Exactly. Good point, Bob. You can have this happen just walking up the stairs or Bending down in the flower garden, oftentimes athletes That's get it great. from it's trauma. Old. Yeah, exactly. So again, younger people get it. Uh, what I can't do anything, here, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? All right. So if you do have a suspected meniscus tear, uh, we're going to show you two tests. Typically, the the gold standard. If they really want to know for sure, they'll do an MRI. Uh, and these tests that we're going to show you are not conclusive. All if right. you test positive, doesn't mean 100% for sure. Uh, you need, really need a professional that does a lot of them to know. And even then, they'll right. say, let's confirm right. with an MRI. Okay. Uh, so at least you know what's going on and you understand some of these tests. So the first one is, if it's my right knee that's locking up and I suspect of it, the first test we're going to do is the Fessley test. Do on your good leg first. So simply... Well, I'll do it this way. This is a good leg. My knee is straight. I'm going to bend it five degrees, which you just can estimate. You know, this is not five degrees, and a little bit isn't, but it's not much. A little flex in it, standing on that leg, and then you rotate back and forth. And you twist and shout. Yep, twist and shout. If it hurts and painful, that's a positive. Then the second part of this test is go to 15 degrees, which is just a little bit more. If you're down here, that's too far. So 5, 15, and rotate again. If they are both po both painful, it's positive. Uh, they're Maybe both. You tore it. Yeah, yeah. there's a there's like you, like suspicion you tore right. it. Uh, if you do it and then there's no pain at all, well, then it's negative. But again, that doesn't mean for sure it's Absolutely not, it's okay. Not, right. Okay, the next one is called the children's test. And I call this the duck walk, and yeah. you'll see why in a little bit. So you stand shoulder width apart. You point your toes out at about a 45, and you bend down. I, this is the way I have it doing with my patients. I have their forearms go down until they touch their quadriceps like this or hands like this and simply see if you can walk like this. You can go sideways, sideways, forward, and backwards. And... My experience is that if it's going to hurt, it hurts pretty quick. Right. And you just stop right away, and that's a positive test. Uh, if both of them, if you do the duck walk, zero pain, you do the Thessaly test, zero pain, 
Well, there's a... Again, positive meaning a possible tear. Right. Exactly right. So those are there's other tests that if you go to see the doctor or a therapist, these are not the only two. Yeah, they do. There are others yeah. as well. Okay, now let's go on to the next part of if your knee clunks. That's a different story. Okay, if your knee's not locking up, but it feels unstable, it's clunking, it just doesn't feel right, or maybe painful as well, uh, then it's a good chance that it may be a ruptured or torn ACL anterior cruciate ligament, which stabilizes the knee in a front and backwards motion, which is really important. Usually these don't just tear without some kind of injury, some trauma. Yeah. Oftentimes it's like when you land and your knee twists Twist. in like this yeah. all at the same football, time. Football, soccer. Yeah, basketball. Right. Girls basketball in high school. Big time. Yeah, they have it more, and it's, there's, a, uh, there's a reason for it. I don't want to get into it, but right. my daughter played basketball. I've seen a number of ACLs over really? those four years wow. playing. So anyways, uh, the test, you can do that, is simply lay down on a bed. If you do this on a, uh, a soft bed, this first test works okay. The second one, not as much, but uh, then you'd want to do it on the floor. So f lying on your back, bring uh, both knees up. Now. What we're going to do, I'll demonstrate on this knee so you can see it, but you're going to do this on the good knee first and get a feel for what. Do you roll that leg up? Yeah, we're going to show Bob's leg. Ooh, well, I'm gonna, got a zipper and everything on here. Look at that. All right, there we go. So here we've got the tibia, okay, and here is the femur and the condyles. Now what you do is take your hands, go underneath here, and I take my thumbs, and I go right over the joint line, which is just below the kneecap. You have to feel for a little hollow spot there. This is uh, where it takes a little skill. And then you simply pull out like this. And you can actually do it without your thumbs there. If, it's, if, if you're looking right at this point and you pull out, this is stable. Now, if you've got a torn ACL and you do that, you likely may see this actually pull out and see a bump form here. Bob, can I rip your ACL well, so we can get a good yeah. demonstration? <laughs> just <I agree>. kidding. <laughs> so if you just put your thumbs there, then you can feel it if it's not so obvious visually. So do it on the good knee first, see how it feels, then do the sore knee. By the way, if your knee is still swollen and sore, you're not going to do this test. No. And a doctor come won't more. either. They'll say, you know, put some ice on it, come back in a few days. Right. And and test it again. Oftentimes it's confirmed by a MRI, uh, but these tests are pretty common. There's a couple other tests. I'm not going to go through those that are more skilled. Um, oh, I take it back. This next one is in my favorite right. test, actually. I'm going to, uh, we can leave that up. Should we get right into it, Bob? Sure. This is called the Lilly's test. It's a doctor, I believe he's in, from Europe. I think he's an Italian doctor. He's done a, a lot of ACLs, thousands of them. Right. And this is what he does for a test. It's, uh, they, they say it's one of the most accurate tests, manual tests that you can do. So you can, like on a bed like this, I like to put a hard, a firm bowl, a uh, towel roll, or something under here that's firm. And that's going to be a leverage point right there. Okay, below the knee on the calf. You're not going to put it under the knee. It will not work there. It has to be completely away from the joint. Okay, Bob is going to relax. You can see his heel is touching right there on the bed. I'm going to push down right here. Now, we're going to look at what happens with the heel. When I push down, you can see the heel comes up immediately. If the ACL is intact and healthy, this is what's gonna happen. Now, some people have lax ACLs naturally, so you're gonna do the good leg first, right. and then compare how it responds to the sore knee. If you push down and there's a leg, in other words, you push down and the heel doesn't come up, or doesn't come up until you've pushed quite a ways, that's an indication you got a torn ACL, uh, which typically means surgery. Not always, there are, you know, some people that, Right. May not be very uh, active or it probably athletic. Probably heal. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to probably heal on its own. But you can live without an ACL. Right. But that's something you talk to your doctor about. So, right. anyways, I think that explains it, Bob. The ACL, the meniscus, I all you need to know. Except good. for what you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with it, and we hope your knees come out very healthy and you're back to your...
fun activities. Bob, I'm going to cover up your knee. It's uh, embarrassing. 